Yo, yo, yo. What is going on, fellas? It's your boy here, Unschooled with Best Guys, here today live with another YouTube video. So, in today's book review, we got David and Goliath by one Sir Malcolm Gladwell. He's got five books, finished three of them, got some more left. Very good books, very well written. And it's crazy how the stories in the Bible really be amazing stories with great morals and values. So without further ado, let's get straight into the business. Oftentimes people compare themselves to who they are around. And when you're around happy people, always smiling and you're depressed, it's going to make it worse. So if you're around people that are uh, always smiling all the time and then you're not feeling good, it's probably going to make you feel worse uh the big if you compare yourself to the other person rather than you know not the big pound top universities take the really bright students and demoralize them by if you take the best students in each high school and then put them all together and then one student gets a b in the class whether it gets an a they're going to be even though they're very smart and they're in the top 0.001% they are going to compare themselves to the people who are 0 0.0001 and then they're not going to feel good. Richard Branson and Charles Schwab have dyslexia and it didn't stop them from achieving greatness. I should probably go over what David and Goliath is first, the story. 3,000 years ago on a battlefield in ancient Palestine, a shepherd boy felled, uh, felled a mighty warrior with nothing more than a stone and a sling. And ever since, the names of David and Goliath have stood for battles between underdogs and giants. David's victory was improbable and miraculous. He shouldn't have won, or should he have? In David and Goliath, Malcolm Gladwell challenges how we think about obstacles and disadvantages, offering a new interpretation of what it means to be discriminated against or suffer from a disability, lose a parent, attend a mediocre school, experience any number of apparent shot, apparent setbacks, and the tradition of Gladwell's previous bestsellers, David and Goliath draws upon history, psychology, and the powerful storytelling to reshape the way we think the world around us. So the whole thing is every single person has a weakness no matter how big and strong they are. So Goliath, man, was huge, 6'9", and had armor from head to toe, only exposing his forehead, iron steel, so thick that a sword couldn't even penetrate it. He had three weapons. He had an iron sword, he had a spear, and then he had a shield. Uh, obviously he was slow, couldn't really move fast, and then he could only really do stuff from close corners. So man pretty much goes undefeated. He, just, he would just destroy any person. Everyone's scared to verse him. Then David comes up, little small guy. He's like a shepherd, which is like, or he's a something to do with sheep. And that's like the lowest rankings of society. And yet he himself is a slinger. So he usually goes shooting stones with I guess two times a rope, something like that, pull it back, a sling. So he's a couple hundred feet away. He steps up, Goliath starts laughing and is like, how is this guy going to defeat me? And then David, since he's so accurate with the slingshot, nails him right in the forehead, his one weakness, Goliath, and he goes all out on the one weakness. So whenever you're very reversing an opponent, you want to work on their weak spots because when you know someone's weakness, you can use it against them and win. And if someone only has one weakness or very few, you attack all out of that and you shall prosper and win. So, yeah, so he has a slingshot, a couple hundred feet away, bam, hits him right in the forehead, goes unconscious on the ground. David picks up the guy's sword, slices his head off, and wins victory. And everyone's like, oh, how do you do this? So a lot of times underdogs actually have more, a way better chance than you would think than the goliath when you struggle in one area of your life make up for it in another oftentimes you think you have a disadvantage but often the disadvantage of making you do things another way can be more beneficial and more efficient than the original way example the guy in the back had dyslexia and struggled to read but made up with it made up for it with listening and asking questions to fine tune and break things down to a simpler formation and memorize what was being explained. So he couldn't read himself. So his advantage was since a young kid, you know, when you can't see, you're going to be able to heal better. When you can't 
here you're going to be able to see better because you know when one thing goes down the other is going to get better it bounce itself out so in reality a lot of people think dyslexia is a curse when it can be an advantage instead of a disadvantage when you look at it another way via going all out and try to remember things and it just make your memory better and then you could apply that to so many different areas of your life and actually become better than people that can read uh, dyslexia can make you so uncomfortable with failure, so people with it try keeping, will keep trying at their goals until complete, and failures don't push them, uh, down at all. Because you're used to failing all the time, because all you have to do everywhere, for the most part, is read, in order to do pretty much anything. So, if you're already comfortable with failing, you're gonna be comfortable with failing in life, so you're gonna take so many more risks and chances, even if you fail, it's not gonna stop you or hurt you. Meanwhile, the other guy's too afraid to even try, because... If he fails, he's not going to feel good. A near miss leaves you traumatized. A remote miss makes you think you are invincible. When bombs drop during World War II. So, if you're right next to someone, if your city is getting bombed, and you're right next to the person that just got bombed, you're going to be pretty scared. But if you're one block away, and bombs are dropping for three months straight, and it just doesn't hit you every single time, and it's a little farther away from you every single time, it's gonna make you actually feel more invincible than you were starting out. Uh, which is, you would think that, you know, knowing that you're gonna get bombed is pretty fearful, but then once you're said it's gonna, once you, uh, you know your place is gonna get bombed or around the area, and then it doesn't for so long, you literally become stronger. Which, most people, you wouldn't think that, but it you can apply it to pretty much any single thing in life. Conquering of the fears produces exhilaration. Courage is what you earn when you've been through tough times and you discover they weren't so tough after all. Oftentimes, the actual experience of the thing that we fear is a lot less scary than the person imagined. Unexpected freedom that comes from having nothing to lose. Tortoise and the hare. The tortoise beats the hare through the sheer persistence and effort. Slow and steady wins the race. A picture is worth a thousand words. A kid must abide by laws easily if these laws are in place. Does it seem predictable? Does it seem like you can speak up and be heard? The authority has to be fair. <sighs> More is not only better. There comes a point, in fact, when the extra resources that the powerful think as the greatest advantage only to serve to make things worse. So it's called the inverted U-curve, so... Think of it as like this, you, you start over here and you go up and then down. So over here, let's say we're going off with money. You have no money, you know, you're gonna have so many disadvantages. You can't buy the best food. You can't live in the safest areas. You can't do what you want in your free time. Then as you go up and up and up, you can buy so many more things with this money and it does and improves your lives greatly. But like they said, around the $75,000 mark, $100,000 mark, you can pretty much do everything that you need to do in life in order to survive and thrive. So as soon as you start being able to get the good food, you have transportation, you live in a safe area, any more money than that, and then it starts to go down. Because, you know, when you start to go down, then maybe you have too much free time. You have, you already have everything, so you can't have more. It creates problems. Your kids, for example, instead of having barely any money, or up here, it's like, I can't afford to buy this. Now the kid knows you can afford to buy it, but you gotta say no to him anyways. So it goes with anything, just the straight balance in the middle usually always works. When you stop going too hard and you find that spot right in the middle that works, you're going to get way farther than anything else. Changing the severity of a punishment doesn't work for people that are thinking short term and on drugs. Joe killed Davis Kimber Reynolds because she would not give him the respect he thought he deserved as he held a gun to her head and grabbed her purse. So they went with uh, her one cop in California wanted to do this thing called the three strike rule. And then once you go to jail three times, the third time you go to jail, you you go for at least a minimum of X amount of years. So one guy had, or not had, one guy went to jail for something really bad. He went to jail for something really bad again. And then he stole someone's 
slice of pizza that they were eating and then went to jail for like 25 years. So I don't know if the third strike you get 25 years or what it was, but I know like back when you could murder someone, you go to jail for 15 years, which is not that long of a time compared to now. But when they implemented the three rules, it didn't really change much. So I just think it's crazy how like, or people, people started using that one thing where it's like, you know, first strike, second strike, and then this guy saw a slice of pizza and now he's jail for 25 years. It's like, it could make people better, but when you, when you force too many rules on someone, it actually becomes harder and then people will do the opposite. But yeah, again, there are some people who like, they don't even care. They're so short term that in the moment, they don't even care about robbing you, whatever you have. They pointed a gun to your face and then you say, oh, I'm not afraid of that. And then they'll shoot you because you, they don't have respect. It's like, you're never going to, like no law is going to. There's three laws or whatever you're trying to fix is not going to fix people like him because they don't care about that. Uh, the very thing that gives Goliath all his power is his biggest weakness. So just like Amazon, Amazon has everything. But their weakness is they are everything, so they can't be focused on one thing. Having too much money and material is debilitating as having too little. Uh, and then another story in this was they had a basketball team of 12-year-old girls that came from another country that didn't know how to play basketball. So the starter came over to the United States, started playing. And uh, they didn't know how to play, so they uh, another coach told them the rules how to play, start off. One team starts on defense, other team starts on offense. They start behind the basketball net, out of bounds. They have five seconds to throw it in, and they have 10 seconds in total to cross the half court line. So his girls realize that most people never play defense right away or full court press ever. So what they do is they work hours upon hours every single day in conditioning. And then those girls would play full court press every single game. They didn't know how to shoot really, they didn't know how to dribble. They just had good conditioning, good play, good defense, and just stole the ball pretty much every single time. And it became one of the uh, I want to say close to national champions in the United States just because they found everyone else's weakness and went all out into it. So, and they, they came from, they were like, they never had how to play for the most part. So they're the David and they're versing the best teams ever and they're winning. So I uh, hope you all enjoyed the video. Other than that, Sherborn Squid will have a good day and peace out.